In the previous tutorial, we looked at the anatomy of an R command and used a function called C. And in this tutorial, we discover what a function is and learn about packages. Functions have a characteristic form. They have a name and then some brackets after them. So you saw with the C function, its name was C and it had some brackets. And uh, what goes in the brackets depends on the function. Sometimes it, it might just be some data or a variable. Uh, sometimes there are some arguments or options that you can set. So I think it's useful to think about functions because we're also used to using dialog boxes. Functions can seem a bit strange, but really it's just like a dialog box in that the function takes some inputs like a dialog box does. So you, you, know, you click things on a dialog box, you might enter some text or whatever, you might drag something around. So there are some inputs that you put in and then when you execute the function, that's like clicking on OK in a dialog box, then though those inputs are processed and then you get some output. So, so you know, some, something comes out of the function. So a dialog box is really just a sort of visual way to uh, interact with a function. And in R, we just don't bother with the visual way of doing it. We just, we do it with text instead. So let's take a really fairly straightforward example. There's a function called here, uh, which, um, Basically, there's one thing you can do with it, which is put some text into it. If you don't put text into it, when you execute it, when you click on OK, effectively, it tells you the file path of your current project. So, um, for example, well, we'll have a look at it in a minute. It basically shows you where on your hard drive your project is. Uh, but you can put some text into it if you want to navigate round your project to find a particular file. So if, for example, we talked in another tutorial about setting up projects and having a data folder and putting all our data in that folder. So if we wanted to say, find out or grab the location of a particular data file, we might add some text. So we might put into the function here, the text data for the data folder slash, which gets us inside the data folder, and then the name of the file, in this case, edify.csv. By adding that text into the here function, it gets added on to the location of our project. So on the slide, you can see um, now when we press OK, we don't just get the path to our project. We get this added text that we, uh, we put into the function. So let's see this in, uh, at work. Let's try executing the here function. So we'll stick in this code chunk for now and type here and let's try executing it. Uh, we can, let's just execute the whole chunk, see what happens. Oh, we get an error, oops. So the error is saying, could not find function here. Now this error is pretty common and one of the reasons that I've deliberately done this is because you will come across this error at some point. Whenever R is telling you it can't find a function, there's one of two reasons. So let's look at the first reason. So R is a modular piece of software. It has some core functionality. It has some core functions built in, but most of its power lies in getting uh, kind of external bits of code and loading them in to uh, your your um, instance of R. So these are called packages. A package is just basically a bundle of code that someone has written. So for example, if you want to run a multi-level model, you can't do that in R, but what you can do is you can install a package or a couple of packages there are actually, which once they're on your system, they um, have the, you know, the relevant functions to run a multi-level model. So when you get a can't find the function uh, type error message, one issue might be that you haven't installed the package that the function lives in. So this is, like I said, it's one of the great strengths of R is you know any statistician across the world can write a package to do something. So this allows R to stay very, very up to date and, it, and for it to move very quickly. Of course, one of the downsides of that is it moves very quickly and there's, there's always like 13 different ways to achieve the same thing. But anyway, in this case, maybe we don't have the package um, that uh, contains the function here. Now actually the function here comes from a package that is also called here. So how do we install a package? And like I said, this is a sort of fundamental part of using R is learning how to install packages. 
Okay, so to install a package, we can use a function called install packages. You should always use this function in the console and not in your Quarto document, because if you use it in your Quarto document, then every time you render the document, it's gonna install the, the package. So you just end up installing the same package over and over again. So we do it at the console. Uh, if we start writing install, then RStudio is gonna have a guess at what we might wanna write, and it's correctly, uh, well, it hasn't correctly, it's given us the options. And top option is fine, so we can click on return to auto-complete that. Then within this function, we uh, do some quotes and then the name of the package that we want to install, in this case, the here package. And then we hit return to execute this command. And some gubbins appears on the screen. And if you don't get an error message, that means that here has been installed. In fact, in this packages tab over here, there's a list of all the installed packages. And basically, I mean, I've got a lot installed. But if you scroll down far enough, you can see here is now listed in that list of packages. Now, what this has done is it's got the here package and it has basically uh, put it on our machine. Okay, so now we've got the here package on our machine. Let's try executing the uh, the here function again. So I'm just going to click on the green arrow. Oh, we get the same error message. Well, that's weird, isn't it? Because we literally just installed the package. So this brings us to the second reason why sometimes R can't install a package. So like I said, installing a package, it puts it on your machine. But what it doesn't do is load it into your uh, current kind of working environment. So it's there to be used, but you need to tell R that you want to use it. And um, this is known as loading a library or you know loading a package into uh, the workspace. So you've kind of got two options about how you load packages or reference packages. Um, and I have laid, this is, these are my labels, I don't think anyone else uses them. One is to use uh, or, or to work with what you might call concise code. This is probably what most people end up doing. Um, so in this case, you load all the libraries or the packages that you want to use in your document using the library function. So if you want to use here, you execute the code that says library here. And then from there on in, you can use all the functions in the here package. Um, I would, if you're going to use this approach, advise that you load all your libraries in, in a code chunk, so sort of right at the top of your document. So, uh, I mean, I also load them alphabetically, so I've, it's really easy for me to see what packages I've loaded and to, to find out. Um, you don't have to put them all at, you don't have to put the library commands all at the beginning. I just think it's, you know, it's a good workflow. It's a good habit to get into. Um, however, this approach can occasionally be problematic because, because R is open source, there are packages floating around that have the same, uh, sorry, functions within them that have the same name. For example, there's a function called recode in at least two different packages. So that can create problems sometimes. Sometimes, you know, you'll, you'll try to use the function recode and R won't know which one you want to use or it will use the, 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 the opposite one to the one you're wanting to use. So that can sometimes be a bit problematic. And the other thing is it can be quite easy to end up loading packages that you don't actually end up using. And that's not necessarily a problem, but it, you know, it's not very tidy. The second option is to use what I've labeled as verbose code. So you can actually reference functions in a kind of more extended way rather than just using the function name, you can put the package name before it and separate uh, the two with two colons. So if we wanted to use here, we could use here, colon, colon, here. Now when you use this kind of code, you don't need to use the library command. You don't need to load the package because what you're saying to R here is you're, you're directly telling it, I want to use the here function from the here package. So you don't need to load it because you are telling R where to find it. Uh, two limitations of this approach is uh, there are some packages that have lots of kind of little helper functions and it becomes, 
your code becomes quite unreadable if you're always like referencing the package as well. You just end up writing a lot. Uh, so the, the packages dplyr and ggplot2 in particular, I think using this verbose approach is quite tricky uh, for, for some of the helper functions. It, it, it doesn't, it makes your code kind of horrible to read. And obviously you're, you know, you're typing more. However, the big advantage of verbose code is you don't get problems with name clashes because you are always telling R the particular function that you want and what package it's from. And I think it's useful for building up a bit of a mental map of where different functions come from. And although you know no one using R memorizes where every function comes from, the ones that you use time and time and time and time again, it is quite useful to know which package it comes from. So I tend to teach, all my teaching materials use verbose code, but uh, you know I, I say this now, in the wild, lots of people don't use verbose code. You can probably find people that think verbose code is a, you know, some kind of hideous crime against coding. Um, and it probably is the case that over time you, you know, you might navigate over to using concise code. So one approach for beginners is to sort of do a belt and braces really which is to um, you know, get into the habit of loading packages with the library commands, use verbose code while you build up a mental mo model where functions come from, and then probably over time, you know, wean yourself off of the verbose code, maybe. Um, in terms of what I use, I'm quite strange, I suspect. <laughs> well, I am quite strange, but I mean, my coding is probably quite strange in that I sort of use a mix of the two uh, so I will load packages like dplyr and ggplot uh, using a library command at the beginning, but I tend to still write verbose code uh, and uh, you know accept the um, the mocking of my peers for doing so. Okay, so let's have a look at doing this with our here function. So. It's still saying it doesn't know where to find it. And I can just show you if we add in the package name before. So if we tell R specifically, we, we want to use here and you can find it in the here package, then this code will now work. And what you can see is, uh, as I said earlier on, it just returns the file path of the project that we're currently working in. Um, so in this case, mine's on my OneDrive, my university OneDrive. <coughs> so it's giving us this rather long uh, address to my OneDrive and then it's in my documents folder and I unimaginatively called it my new project. Um, and as I said, this is something we can we can add text to. So inside this, if we, so let's say this is our project, this is my project folder over here and we want to navigate into the data folder to get to grab this CSV file. We can use the here function to say Go into my data folder, like now nope, you're in my project, go into my data folder and find me edify.csv. And now when we execute the here function, it's just added that extra information. So this is a way for us to get the file path for a data set, for example. It's a really, really useful function because uh, what this essentially means is it doesn't matter what computer this code is being executed from here just goes and finds where our project is stored and then uh, you know within the project navigates into the data folder to that csv file so it makes this project completely portable across different machines and also we don't have to write out this hideous file path to get to our data 